75 and 78, right? And my answer say 76.5. That's the efficiency line on the curve, okay? The percentage on that is the efficiency line. Uh, Mr. Bula, in the design, do you provide the pump curve? Or they have to go for it? They have to come up with the pump curve. Will they have to use a pump? Very likely. Very likely. For for both projects, right? Yeah. So it may not be a pump, but if they use a Okay. Whatever pump you use. Or uh, you you may start, you may assume, okay, you may Google it or you may use okay, cover pump company. Let's assume we use pump from that company. And let's assume that hey, you want one hundred gallon per minute. Then you show in your design that in that case, I have to use this much internal diameter <coughs> and it will be at whatever efficiency. So this arm curve can help you for your CD design, right? And when I teach you, I expect that this arm curve thing will appear in your final project too, okay? Final project. And you talk about this. Okay, that's the efficiency thing. Okay, that's the efficiency line. But you can Google, use Google image, okay, to find it. Brake horsepower, 32. How do I get 32? Look at this line. 15 horsepower, 20 horsepower, okay, 25, 30. And my point is over there, so let's clean everything. 30 horsepower is that line, okay. And 40 is that line. My operating point is over there. So it's somewhere between 30 and 40. And I think it's 32. Okay. What about NPSHR? I haven't told you yet about NPSHR, but we have to be able to read it. See this line from the bottom? It's going up, 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 up. And on the right hand side, NPSHR in feet. Okay, look at that. So when I go up from there, Okay, to the right. So I use 900 gallon per minute. Right? I go up to the right, and then I can get NPSHR. Okay, required net positive suction head. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about NPSHR. And by the way, when I put the word NPSHR, at least during the exam or during the quiz you must be able to tell me the full name, okay? That word is need to memorize. Just a couple days, okay? Uh, maybe Thursday after the spring break. How about that? Memorize this. What is the full name of NPSHR? Net positive second head required. Oh, or maybe that's too much. I think that's too much. Let's take a look at the pump. If I have uh, a pump, Okay, and this pump connect to a pipe, but the pipe is very small, very small, okay, and it's have outlet. What happened? So if the pipe is very small, it have a hard time to sucking it up, right? And if you look at a cylindrical pump, there's no, nothing sucking anything up, okay? It's just a blade spinning. Pump is good at pushing, not pulling. It doesn't pull, but it push very good. Okay, so we need to have, we need to know how much pressure do we need on the suction side. Okay, we need to have some pressure. Uh, okay. let's, let's have some clean pad, not pad. No pad cannot draw. Paint, maybe paint. So I need a. Typically I have tank, tank, conical shape to the bottom and connect to the at the middle, right? And it's this shot on the top. So that is 
normal uh, arrangement for this. There's a tank. But we have to put the tank on the top so that it has some level on top of it. Okay, it has some uh, pressure on top of it. Uh, it's uh, 11.50 now, so he excused from the class, okay, with university excuse, we don't blame anything. Okay, session head required. So, net positive session head required telling me about how much should be the head that I need so that it can pump, okay? NPSHR, previous example I get five, right? Net positive session head requires just five. Okay. Five net positive session head required. Five feet. So this tells me if I do the connection and the level over here is five feet or more, it's okay. But if it is less, it's not okay. It's not gonna pump. Why is that? Because if I have less height, let's say instead of five, I have just five feet, I have just three feet. Okay. It's not okay because I deliver less than I try to pump out. So I pump it out very fast, but I, the input coming in too slow. I try to pump out faster than what is coming in. What do you think happens? Gravitation, right? Air bubble. Air bubble doesn't mean it's boiling, but there's a phase change. We, we, we try to like break it or something, okay? So the amount that coming in has to match the amount that's going out. If my pump pump a lot, a lot of flow rate, this means there has to be a lot of pressure coming in too. Otherwise, I pump out more than what is coming in. If you look at the pump curve, you can see when flow rate go up, 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 up. Net positive suction head require NPSHR go up too. So when I try to pump fast, I need more supply. Okay, I need more head. So this this picture is just a rough estimation. Okay. Precise calculation is this: net positive suction head required by the pump. Some minimum pressure at the pump suction is required so that there is no gravitational curve. Pump too quick, then the supply liquid is not good. Okay, avoid gravitation by assuming that the liquid pressure does not drop between the vapor pressure at any point in the pump. Net positive suction head available must be more than net positive suction head required. We provide more head than is required. Then it can pump. Net positive suction head is recommended to be three to five feet more than net positive suction head required. Okay, three to five feet more. It's not just equal. It should be three to five feet more. If it's equal, maybe it still work. Okay, calculation. Okay. Uh, do I need to change? Okay. Net positive NPSHR. We get it directly from the pump curve. Correct. What about NPSHA? Available net positive suction head. So the available is depend on how much liquid height, right? If the liquid level in the tank is taller, then we have more available. So we have to do some calculation. The formula is here. P1, absolute pressure head on surface of liquid in feed tank, okay? Use what? 14.7 for open tank, right? Oh, it's have to be in the middle of feet. HS, static suction head. Static suction head is uh, specific gravity multiplied by some, uh, some height, right? Vertical distance between the eye of the first stage impeller, center line, and the suction level, uh, suction liquid level plus if liquid level is higher than the pump. Typically, HS is positive. Liquid level or liquid in the tank has to be taller or higher than the level of the, the pump, okay? You don't put centrifugal pump on top to suck something in. 
There's some kind of that time, but it's not the time that we are talking about. HVP, head vapor pressure. Head vapor pressure at the vapor pressure of liquid at the pumping temperature equal to P1 if liquid has already been flashed and at equilibrium with the gas in the tank. Head vapor pressure, how do we get it? What do you suggest? Uh, many times, I think Connor suggests using Google, right? I use it, it works. Use Google, okay? Next is such a head vapor pressure. Vapor pressure is a function of temperature, okay? I need that value. How do I get it? Uh, handbook or uh, Google? Google it, it show me. HFS, uh, friction head and transfer loss in the suction side. Okay. If my pipe is very long okay, on the suction side, so instead of put the pump right next to the tank, I move it far away. And I have coming in is very long distance before I reach that. So this makes available head to go down, right? Because available head has to compete with the frictional pressure loss in the line. Make sense? So when we calculate the available net positive such and head, we need to minus any frictional loss. Otherwise, try to use short distance between the tank and the pump and try to use a big pipe size. If the connection is one and a half inch, use one and a half inch all the way. Okay, so if I have the pump and the connection on the suction side is one and a half inch, use one and a half inch all the way to the tank and minimize this distance. Sometimes you may want to reduce the cost. Okay, hey, over there is one and a half inch size. Let's use a reducer to half inch and connect it to the tank. Don't do that, okay? If it is one and a half inch over there, it is there for a reason. It's like a, a rule of thumb or recommended value, okay? Um, next one. Okay. This is for illustration purpose only. Typically, the pump is lower than the tank, okay? This pump, Typically, it's said to be over there. And then we can do this. <coughs> net, positive, net positive suction head available can be increased by lifting the tank up. Okay, suction tank, lift it up. <coughs> Providing a low head centrifugal uh, pump, or use a charge pump. Have another pump to charge this pump. Okay, put pump in series. Minimize the suction pipe length. Okay. Use elbow, 45 degree elbow instead of 90 degree elbow. What is 45 degree and 90 degree? What is that about? Do you have any idea? Have you ever seen elbow? Elbow. Elbow. You know, this is 45 degree, this is 50, uh, 90 degree. So 45 degree, it's look like that. 90 degree, it's look like that. So 90 degree has more pressure drop than 45 degree, okay? If you use 45 degree two times, it's still better than use 90 degree one time, okay? Or if we use horse flexible line instead of a solid 90 degree, we have less uh, acceleration of pressure loss, okay? Use eccentric reducer or flat side up to eliminate gas pocket. What is this about? Have you seen the eccentric reducer? This is about the pipe fitting. Um, pipe fitting reducer. It looks like that. Okay. Do you use this one? Oh. Do you use this one? Or this one. Number one or number two? Number one, raise your hand. Jason, which number? Number one. This is number one. 
Use number one. Is this eccentric or not? Or number two, I, I recommend from the slide, I recommend use eccentric reducer. Number two, very good, very good. Number two, Simon, right? Yeah, number two. Jason, you did it wrong. Just number two, okay? Number two, look at this. Um, so when we connect a pipe, this one is on the center. This one is eccentric. Use this one. And I use flat side up. Okay. Why do I have to use flat side up? If I use reducer, okay, one way to do the connection is that. Another way is this, right? So let's say I have fluid coming in, reducer. Number one, flat side up. Number two, flat side on the bottom. What's the difference, Jason? <coughs> yes, of course. What about if we have some air bubble? What happened? Will air accumulate in number one, or air will accumulate in number two? Number two. I don't want air to accumulate in the fitting. Okay. So that's why I put the flat side up. Okay. So if there's an air coming in, so air will go out in the reducer. But if I put the flat side down, air coming in, air may accumulate over there. Not good. All right. Um, that's the recommendation. Basically, try to minimize any frictional pressure loss or acceleration of pressure loss between suction and the tank. Just that. What about the calculation? Tank is open to atmosphere. Zero psig. Zero psig. Thirty-four feet water for P one pumping water at seventy f. Fp blah 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 blah. How do you get net positive suction head available? P one. Let's P one. P1 is 0 PSIG. 0 PSIG is 34 feet. Okay? So I use what? 14.7 uh, multiplied by what? 2.33 or something, right? To convert to feet. And I get, is it 34? Hopefully it's 34. So P1, 34 feet. That's not a problem. HS, HS, suction head. So, suction is, HS is static head. Vertical distance between the eye of the first stage in parallel in the suction liquid level. Where's the eye? That eye, right? That's the eye. So, liquid level is over there. And the difference is this thing is 10 feet. That's the length okay, that we use for HS. Okay. HS. HVP, head vapor pressure. How do you get that? Google. Okay. 70 F. Okay, that's 70 F, right? I Google it already before the class. Uh, 70 F, first I do 70 F to C. I use B. Okay, you don't need to Google it. You can just use B too. Okay. I go from 70, it says 21.11 Celsius. Okay. I then I okay first I, I think I Google this. Uh, so I Google water vapor pressure. Okay, water vapor pressure. It give me some number. I click it. Okay, weird chemist. <laughs> and I see okay seventy F is twenty one right? Twenty one Celsius. Twenty one Celsius is 18.7 tor. Tor is a unit of pressure for vapor pressure. What is tor? I don't know either. I could go with it. Okay. 18.7 tor to PSI. It converts from 18.7 to 563. Good? Then I get PSI. Okay. And PSI to. So that's why you see over there. That's why the given value is 
36 psi for head vapor pressure. This is a given information, but if it is not given, what do we do? We Google it. Okay, it depends on temperature and it's very small. Okay. It's very small. And typically it's it's just toy air. You just pump water, right? Or if you pump oil, you need to know vapor pressure of oil. Okay. Alright. The next one is head uh, friction head at a certain part. One inch or one feet. So this is a friction to go from this part to that point. Friction has to do with this, when liquid coming in. Okay, we have a tank, like this, right? Liquid go in here, that's, that is pressure drop already. We call sudden contraction. Sudden contraction, so when flow area is high, and it instantaneously contract to a small gap, we have uh, acceleration of pressure loss because of the uh, um, call it, the, the instant, instantaneously reduced or contraction, and then we have another pressure drop at the bend. At ninety degree bend, we have another frictional pressure loss, and we have a frictional pressure loss along the pipe, right? If the pipe is longer, we have more friction. All those things have to calculate. You can calculate it, but we didn't talk about it in this lecture yet. It will be later. For now, it is given as one fit. Okay. Put all the number in. Then I have in the same unit, which is fit again, forty-two point two. Previously, I MPSH I made just five feet, right? But I have forty-two point two feet, so. Available is more than the required. Available net positive such and head is more than the required. Then we can pump. Then it is okay. Good. You can do this, right? Except you don't have Google doing the test. All right. This is uh, the pump curve given you, and it shows based on different the size of the impeller. Okay. Now you you know how to use a pump curve. What about system? System head or pressure drop in the system. Uh, pressure drop in the system has to do with uh, frictional pressure loss, acceleration of pressure loss. <coughs> so we may estimate it quickly, but not as accurate as the actual calculation. We can estimate it by using this equation. Okay, P and trans pressure exit pressure. P2 minus P1, okay. We have head HD HS elevation from the pump impeller to the eye at the exit, and the, so this is a gravitational term, right? And we have uh, entrance and exit velocity, okay. This is a kinetic term, and we have frictional pressure loss term. Add them together, when we get head of the system, okay. So once we have the head of the system. Then we have another line. Where's another line? We have this line at different flow rate. And the cross point is the operating condition. Good. Right, head of the system. Example of the calculation of the head of the system. We have different pressure, five minus zero divided by one, one pi by that, change to unit of fit. And HDHS, the difference in the height, the velocity is the same. Pressure loss component. So if we know the difference in the height, we know the difference in the pressure at point one and point two. So this is for the example, right? So we know the pressure difference. Then the last term is velocity difference. There's no velocity difference. Then the last term will be uh, friction part. Friction part can be estimated by hazard William equation or use Darcy formula 2F rho V square over D. F is standing friction factor. Okay. Uh, done. This is Hassan William equation. Do we want to use it? Uh, yes, for a quick calculation. But when you look at this, 
Hazen Bingham equation is flow has to be turbulent. Okay? Density and viscosity is for water at 60 Fahrenheit. So if you try to use Hazen Bingham equation for the case of oil, it is going to be accurate or not accurate? No, because oil doesn't have viscosity of 1 cm. It's hand bomb. Okay? And it's just, okay, it's just put the number in and get the value. C is a constant for various material. Oh, this is D, yeah, okay, not why you something. Question on this, has it been a equation? Have you seen it before? Jason? You have seen it before. What is C value? What is that for? To account for what? Different material, of course. Is that about roughness? Is that about roughness? Yeah, it's about roughness of the pipe, right? It's not the chemical property of the material or anything. Turbulent flow has to do something with the roughness. Okay. Can we use hundred million equation for laminar flow? Okay, next next to you. Ka Kamila? Kala? Kala. For laminar flow, hundred billion equation will work true or false. Yes, true or false. For laminar flow, has a million equation work? False, okay. Very good. It doesn't work because it's for turbulent flow. Uh, Z value, 120 or something. This is a quick approximation. You put the number in, get the value, and it tells us about the uh, relationship between pipe diameter, uh, whatever there, of water, and head, frictional pressure loss, HF. Put it in into this part, then we get head of the system. Okay. All right, and that's a C factor for hundred million equation. Cast ion new one thirty getting all getting all getting all. The value is different. Okay, concrete hundred uh, million C value different value for different material. Okay, that's a better way to calculate pressure drop. What if it is oil? What do we do? We cannot use Hazen Milliam equation. If you use Hazen Milliam equation in your report for the case of oil, you will end up like a group that get 10, okay? I don't want that to happen. <clears throat> for the case of oil, let's use this. Frictional pressure loss in the pipe, delta P over delta L. Fm. Multiply by rho, b square over 2d. Next to, hold on, that's that. What, what, what system? Alex. Alex, what is velocity? Is that velocity set at the standard condition or velocity inside the pipe? Uh, inside the pipe. Inside the pipe, correct. That V has to be actual velocity. And this is this equation, okay, next from you, Scott. Is this for liquid or for gas or for both or not for any of them? Which one? I believe liquid. Does it work for gas? Yes or no? Sure. You don't know for sure. It kind of works for gas, but the problem with gas is this. It works for gas too, but with gas, you see the density? Density also shame with length. Okay? Density is with length. And Reynolds number depends on density. And velocity inside the pipe depends on density, right? When pressure drop, density become it, it expands. So velocity going up by itself without anyone doing anything, right? And when the it's expand, there's a little change in the temperature. So this equation is it works, but if you use it for gas, it's not quite easy because we have to discretize it. So for gas, we use what? Scott? For, for the case of gas, what do we use? Are we use, or we want Jason to answer it? Or you want Jason to answer it? What do you do for the case of gas if you don't use this equation? You, 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 you use pan at home, right? Pan handle. Okay. Panhandle equation is equation to use for gas. We have panhandle. You have heard about this, have you? 
can't handle the equation. No, not yet. So we have Bermuda equation, panhandle equation. That's very good for gas. This equation valid for gas. Don't get me wrong. This equation valid for gas, but it requires discretization and some detailed calculation of the change of density and velocity with length. Okay. For the case of liquid, it's very good. It can use for oil. Okay. Uh, F rho v square over 2d. Uh, delta p is in Pascal. In Pascal. Okay. L length in meter. Mu uh, dynamic viscosity Pascal second. Not same for us. Okay. Uh, who's next? Stephen. How many centipoy equal to one Pascal second? Ten. One thousand. Okay. One thousand centipoy is one Pascal second. <coughs> F modification factor. Rho is oh. Next to you, Daniel. Is this for turbulent flow or laminar flow? Or it can work for both? Both? You don't remember. You need to remember for test, okay? It works for both. For turbulent flow, we use uh, we use this part of the chart, okay? This is a Moody diagram, right? For laminar flow, we use another part of the graph. 64 over Reynolds number, okay? That is for the case of laminar flow, for Moody friction factor. And for the case of turbulent flow, we use another part of the chart. You will remember, okay? All right. So once we know that, we will talk a little bit more on how to do that, but once we do that, we can, oh, this part is about how to get radio number when viscosity is in centric stroke. You read it, okay? This is just a unit conversion. <coughs> Frictional pressure loss, head pressure. Uh, so once we know friction pressure loss, then we can put the number in and get the result. This equation, <coughs> uh, HF in feet is F V squared, I mean V squared, over to the g sub c and length okay so that this is pressure drop in unit of feet okay if you use english unit and use multi friction factor it will be this this you may consider as a final equation if we have fanning friction factor what is the relationship between fanning friction factor and multi friction factor ryan F sub M and F sub F. Fanning friction factor and Moody friction factor. Which one is more? Moody is, is more or fanning? For laminar flow, fanning friction factor is 16 over Reynolds number. Okay. Where Moody friction factor is 64 over Reynolds number. Okay. Memorize this for the quiz, and you at least you need to know this thing is for laminar flow. Okay, it doesn't matter if it is gas or liquid; it's for laminar flow. Uh, okay, two more minutes. For <coughs> for the loss through the fitting, we have fitting, we have elbow, we have valve. What do we do? We may use loss coefficient. So loss coefficient is the E sub V term. You see that E sub V term. E sub B is different for the different case, and I have round trans pi E sub B equal to 0.05, sudden contraction E sub B equal to that, sudden expansion, okay, or if it 90, 90 degree elbow, 45 degree elbow, rounded or square, globe bow, get bow. So this is to calculate accelerational pressure loss, okay, this is E sub B term. Once we have E sub B, we have to add each part together. That is this term, right? And it depends on velocity. Okay. Uh, 12, 19. One more minute left. Uh, I, I, I wish you good luck for this evening. Okay. The exam started at 5. 
if you require 2x time, 1.5x time, you will be in mud lab, okay? During lab, over there. Otherwise, you stay in this room. This room can fit every one of you. The test, we will put it alphabetically order based on the first game, starting from the front, okay? When you come in, don't open anything yet and try to read to locate your name. When you see it, we will have some announcement on the correction of the exam, and then we will start. Okay.